Minigames give game developers a chance to shake things up and introduce exciting new gameplay elements like high-stakes card games, thrilling action-packed sports, or horrifying animal abuse. The silver medal position, a centre-left scores you 50. Occasionally, however, video games will take something incredibly mundane and try to pass it off as an exciting minigame, possibly because they're stuck for ideas, but more likely because they just want to see exactly how much tedium people are willing to put up with in a video game if you give them a score at the end. Here are seven of our favourites, and we use the term favourites extremely loosely. Enjoy! One. Deux. Mouth and anus are perfectly in line. It's odd that whenever the news wants to illustrate the gameplay of Grand Theft Auto V, they'll use a clip like this. Oh no! When I say you suck, I mean you really suck. Rather than one like this. And yet, they're both the same game. Because if you fancy a break from shooting down police helicopters with a rocket launcher, GTA V offers a yoga minigame to help you unwind after all that crime. For all its health benefits, yoga is not one of the more active pastimes you can participate in, but that doesn't stop Grand Theft Auto V from attempting to replicate it faithfully in this minigame, which sees you use the analog sticks to position Michael's limbs into yoga poses and the triggers to control his breathing. And while there are occasional difficult poses, this is pretty much the most mundane thing you can do in GTA V short of actually obeying traffic laws. It just feels wrong. All in all, it's actually a pretty authentic recreation of yoga, which is a surprise considering the obvious contempt for yoga and the people who practice it on display in the rest of GTA V. Yoga is the answer, Mikhail. But what is the question? Honestly, scum of the earth. Not like us. Violent bank robbers. Huh. This is the only way to get rich quick in Bailu. Turtle races, huh? Remember when Shenmue 3 was announced at video game trade show E3 and everyone lost their minds? That's because they knew that the king of mundane minigames was coming back, and that if it wanted to keep its crown, it was going to have to come up with something even better than forklift truck racing. Thankfully, those fans weren't disappointed, as Shenmue 3 contains a whole bunch of minigames, from returning classics such as Lucky Hit, to new favourites, like trying to catch escaped chickens, I guess. <laughs> For sheer relentless non-excitement, however, may we recommend the hottest sport in Bailu Village, turtle racing. How much will you put down? Now I know what you're thinking. Andy, the turtle is a notoriously slow creature. Won't the race be slow and long and boring? To which the answer is yes. Just try and contain your excitement as you watch these heptathletes in a half shell slowly crawl their way across the race course with all the blistering pace of continental drift. Jeez, Shenmue. Is outrun in this one? It isn't. Okay, that explains it. Boy, the Yakuza series of violent organized crime games is well known for its wild and wacky minigames, from the one you control using your own pee. To the one where you have to calm a fussy baby. <laughs> you also do violent organized crime at some point, I swear. Perhaps as a test to see just what they can get away with turning into a minigame, the most recent Yakuza game, Yakuza Like a Dragon, includes a minigame where you become a census taker's assistant and count pedestrians. <laughs> This traffic census taker, it seems, has badly hurt his hand pressing his clicker thing, and so needs the young, sprightly hands of 42-year-old Yakuza Like a Dragon protagonist Ichiban Kasuga to help him out. Ooh. 
It starts out, it must be said, extremely boringly, with you counting the number of men who walk past. But this is a Yakuza game. I've got a feeling it's about to get real wacky around here. Okay, still boring. Maybe in the next section we'll get attacked by a rival census taker who wants to steal all our clicks. Oh. Hang on, let me just check this is still Yakuza. <laughs> Yep, still Yakuza. Sure, the roads are occasionally full of robots and Roombas and cats, but I get the feeling the game is daring me to keep playing this minigame where I do a mundane traffic census job when I could be, say, having a fist fight with a literal tiger. Still, the old timer's dedication to his job is kind of inspiring, knowing that he's been in this crushingly boring job for 30 years and yet he still sticks it out. Hey! This game. How hard can this be? Hmm. Yeah. Easier than I thought. In cooperative prison escape game A Way Out, you play as Vincent and Leo, two convicts on the run who between them have enough facial hair for one full beard. Being on the run from the law, you'd think Vincent and Leo wouldn't have enough time for minigames, and yet throughout their adventures they find the time to stop for sports, connect four, and even video games, despite this being 1972, where the best video game you could play was this nonsense. Nice. Midway through the game, Vincent and Leo risk everything to sneak into the hospital where Vincent's wife is giving birth, because apparently that place has these really cool wheelchairs that you can play a balancing minigame with. They'll also pop in and see the baby, if there's time. While you might think that there'd be more to this minigame, or that perhaps the wheelchairs would form some aspect of the duo's daring escape, this is, in fact, it. You and your partner balance in the wheelchairs, scoring points until you fall backwards, and crack your skull on the linoleum. Alright, maybe not. Hey, at least you're already in a hospital. Taking a photo with your friends doesn't sound like the sort of thing that would make an exciting minigame, but when Nintendo tells you something is a minigame, you shut up and listen. What, are you going to tell Nintendo how to make minigames? Honestly, take a look at yourself. This is Flash Forward, one of the minigames in Mario Party 10, in which four of the beloved pantheon of Mario characters line up for a group photo. The minigame part comes in when it turns out that they're all unbearable camera hogs who will literally shove each other out of the way, off the podium, or just directly in the face if it means getting more screen real estate to themselves. While it might be mundane, it's certainly vicious and we finally get a chance to see just who is willing to throw the other characters aside just to get their moment in the spotlight. I think we all suspected. Final Fantasy IX follows Zidane, who sets out to kidnap a princess before becoming embroiled in a plot that could end the very world itself, and that only Zidane and the friends that he meets along the way can stop. As such, you wouldn't think that the party mage would have time to waste playing jump rope, or that Final Fantasy IX would bother turning what I think we can all agree is easily the most boring playground activity into a playable minigame. And yet here we are. As you'd expect, this is quite possibly the dullest minigame in the history of interactive entertainment, as all you do is press a button to make your character jump over a rope. You earn prizes such as money and items for getting to certain numbers of jumps, and in case you thought you could maybe switch off and let muscle memory take over, think again because the rhythm changes to stop you doing that in your face, Final Fantasy IX player. If you want to reap all the rewards that Jumping Rope has to offer, you have to jump said rope 1,000 times, an astonishing feat of endurance and boredom defiance that requires you to hop over a piece of string for eight real-world minutes. 
maybe the very world itself will end soon and I can stop jumping rope. Have you ever wondered why people sneeze? You haven't, because the answer is probably boring? Man, you are not going to like this entry. Mario & Luigi Bowser's Inside Story is a Mario RPG where you get shrunk down and go inside Bowser's body, which is about as unpleasant as it sounds. One of the minigames you'll encounter while inside Bowser, again, a real concept for an actual Mario game, is found inside Bowser's nose when he takes a sniff of a flower. Endlessly pirouetting, for some reason, Mario and Luigi have to bat grains of pollen into Bowser's nasal walls to make them red and inflamed. Next in this fun minigame starring Nintendo's most marketable character is to, let me just check my notes, slam into the swollen membrane. Obviously a typo. Right, okay, and we just do this once, right? over and over again until Bowser sneezes. What was wrong with jumping on turtles and collecting coins? That seemed to be working fine. So there you go, those were seven mundane things that video games decided needed to be turned into minigames. Did we miss your favourite? Type your suggestion out in the comments and you'll get 10 ox points and your time will be entered in our Hall of Fame. For more videos like this, subscribe to Outside Xbox, or even better, hit the bell icon on the bottom right of the screen to get a notification when we've got a new video. Thanks for watching.